Okay. So, we were discussing the Cauchy integral formula. And this Cauchy integral formula said that if f z be analytic in a simply connected domain, let f z be analytic in a simply connected domain d, then for any point z naught, point z naught in d, for every point j naught in D and any simple closed path closed path C in D that encloses J naught J naught the value of this integral F j over z minus z naught along the path c is equal to 2 pi i times the value of the function at a point z that is this is our domain d z naught is this point and c is a curve which encloses the point z naught lying in d the direction is anti clockwise direction counter clockwise direction counter clockwise c is tables in the counter clockwise so the proof of this we have already seen few examples based on this formula let's see so the proof of this so start with fz which can be written as f of z naught plus fz minus fz naught clear now substitute in one this is the formula so integral of fz z minus z naught along the path c g z is nothing but what fz naught is a fixed value so we can take it outside integral c dz over z minus z naught plus integral along the curve c fz minus fz naught divide by z minus z naught dz okay the first part of this is nothing but the f of z naught into 2 pi i because this integral is a well known one we are m is equal to minus 1 the value will come out to be 2 pi i whatever the closed path c may be okay means circle c is a circular closed path there is a simple closed path c which can be done okay c is a simple closed path in fact, it can be transferred to the circle easily because by deformation of the path. Because if C is any closed path, uh, suppose this is our C, okay, which is not a circle, it encloses the point Z naught. Then the value of the integral along this path C will be the same as the value of this integral along this circle. Along this circle, why? The reason is like this that if it suppose picked up the two point here then the value of the line integral from this to this is the same as the value of the line integral along this path by deformation of the path because the function is analytic similarly along this path the value will be the same as this path so value of the integral along any closed curve will be the same as the value of the integral along the circle centered at z naught with the radius say r. So, we can transfer and the value will come out to be 2 pi i. So, there is nothing to worry about. Then second part we wanted to show we, this part will go to 0. This is our okay. So, second part we wanted to do. So, what is our second part is f z minus f z naught over z minus z naught. So, let us see. Hmm. Okay. Now, second part is integral f z minus f z naught over z minus z naught along the simple closed any simple closed curve curve c lying in d and which encloses 
which encloses the point z naught. This was the given. We wanted the value of this integral will be 0. Okay. Now, if we look this function f z minus f z naught over z minus z naught. Now, this function is analytic except at z equal to z naught that is all. So, the function the function the integrand is analytic inside C except at z naught. So, if we look the function f z minus z the numerator is analytic, but the point z naught is at this point the whole function is ceased to be analytic. Okay. Now, apply the principle of deformation. So, apply principle of deformation of path. So, we can replace C by then we can replace C the curve closed curve C by a small circle a small circle k of radius say rho and center z naught. Why? This is our C is it not? This was our C because this curve C was this okay, which encloses the point z naught. Now, by deformation of path, we are replacing this C by means of a circle centered at z naught with a radius say rho. This is the radius rho and direction remains the same. This is and this is possible because the deformation path because if I take two curve as I told earlier that if I take any point join this one, join this one. Okay. Then if I go along this direction and come back along this and going from here like this, the this domain the function is totally analytic. So the integral of this function point, these two point along this path and the path in this direction, uh, direction will remain the same will remain the same. So, this is what uh, in this one here. And here if we take this integral from here to here, start from this go like this and up to here. This integral of the function along this path will be the same as the integral along this red line because throughout this the function f z minus f z naught over z minus z naught is analytic. So, this way by deformation form C can be reduced to this path. Similarly, this part of the C can be reduced to this portion. So, entire C can be reduced by a circle centered at z naught with the radius rho. So, that is what we have. So, by using the deformation of form we can replace C by a small circle of radius rho and center C without altering the value of this. Okay. <coughs> Now, further since the function f z is analytic, f z is analytic, so it is continuous also. So, it is continuous throughout t, hence at particular it is continuous at z naught. So, for a given epsilon, so for given epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta, there exists a delta positive such that mod of f z minus f z naught less than epsilon null for all z, all z in the disk mod z minus z naught is less than delta. Okay. Now, choose rho because rho is our own choice. We can reduce rho as, as desired. 
okay, because it should not touch z naught that is all. So, choose rho such that rho is smaller than rho is less than delta, smaller than delta. Now, once you choose then consider then mod of f z minus f z naught divided by z minus z naught. This will be strictly less because this part is less than epsilon naught. Z minus Z naught is a circle centered at Z naught with the radius rho. So, this is equal to rho. Okay. So, the because, because Z minus Z naught mod is rho e to the power i theta, we have theta lying within this. It is a circle. So, Z minus Z naught mod becomes rho. So, we get this and this is true at each point of k, at each point of a circle k. This is a circle k. Okay? This is it. Now, apply the ML inequality. So, now consider mode of integral f z minus f z naught divided by z minus z naught d z modulus of this along the path k. Now, this will be less than equal to, now this part is less than epsilon l, this is less than l, so epsilon l by rho and mod of in, an integral mod dz over k is the circumference of the k. So, this is the 2 pi rho. So, this becomes the 2 pi epsilon l, but epsilon l is arbitrarily small, but epsilon l is arbitrarily small. So, it goes to 0 as it can be. So, this will go to 0, is it not? As albeit is small, therefore, second part is tending to 0. This not contribute anything. So, we get, so the integral of this curve, finally, we get integral of the function f z over z minus z naught along any simple closed curve C which encloses the point z naught and f is generated throughout will be equal to 2 pi i times the value of the function that is proved. Okay. So, this will be proved for this. Clear? So, this will now examples we have already seen. So, need not to work. Uh, now, in this is done for a simple connected domain when d is a simply connected domain and c is a curve inside it. So, for a multiple connected domain, for multiply connected domain, connected domain, uh, for multiple connected domain, there are Cauchy integral formula will take this shape. So, let us suppose if f z is analytic, is analytic on c 1 and c 2 and in the ring shape ring shape domain bounded by c 1 and c 2 c 1 and c 2 that is this is our domain that this is c 1 here is c 2 we are taking opposite direction here c 1 in clockwise c 2 in counter clockwise <coughs> c 1 is sorry c 1 is counter clockwise counter clock wise, while C 2 is a clockwise, C 2 is clockwise. So, this is counter clockwise and here is clockwise, 
direction is like this. So, suppose C 1 and C 2 are uh, f is analytic on C 1 and C 2 and in the ring shape domain this ring set domain this and z naught b and z naught b is any point is any point in that domain in that domain then the value of the function at a point z naught is equal to 1 by 2 pi i integral along the curve c 1 of the function f z over z minus z naught d z plus 1 by 2 pi i integral of the function f z over z minus z naught d i along the curve c 2 where the integral is outer is taken in the counterclockwise, inner is taken in the clockwise and z naught is any point is side it. So, this is this gives the Cauchy integral formula for the multiple connected domains and similarly others. Okay. So, I think that is uh, now <coughs> there is one um, derivative of the analytic functions. So, before that let me take one of the examples, uh, yeah. Where is that derivatives? Okay. Let us see this example 1 by hmm. integral d z over z square plus say 1 over the circle c where c is mod z equal to 4 mod z equal to 4. Let us see this. Now, the function f z is 1 by z square plus 1, which is not analytic, which is not analytic at the point z equal to plus minus i. These are the point plus minus your z square plus uh, 4 sorry this is 4 z square plus 4. So, we get the mod z equal to 4 okay, plus minus 2 i this is plus minus 2 i 4. Okay. So, the singularities are lying here z equal to 2 i z equal to minus 2 i the circle is centered at 0 with the radius 4. So, minus 4 plus 4 and here is something like this. So, this is our circle. Okay. This is our C mod z equal to say 4. Now, the value of this integral we wanted this. So, if we look this, this function has two singularities. So, we can remove the singularities by drawing the two curves say c 1 and c 2 c 1 and c 2. So, line integral uh, along the pass outer boundary is the same as the line integral along the inner boundary. So, this will be the same as integral along c 1 d z over z 4 square plus 4 plus the line integral d z over z square plus 4. Okay. Now, c 1 encloses the point 2 i. So, basically the function z minus 2 i uh, 1 by z minus 2 i 
over z plus 2i. So, if we break up z square plus 4 as z plus 2i and z minus 2i, then consider f z as 1 upon z minus 2i and then z minus z naught is this. Uh, so, it is c 2. Okay, c 2 encloses minus 2i. So, z equal to minus 2i it is analytic and for c 1 you can write 1 over z plus 2i over z minus 2i along the path c 1. So, if we write it this way then what happens? This becomes a function f z which is analytic throughout the domain is it not? Because c 1 this c 1 encloses only z equal to 2 i. So, outside the function is analytic everywhere except this point. So, this is f z over z minus z naught. So, the value of this integral will be equal to 2 pi i times the value of the function 1 z plus 2 i at a point z equal to 2 i. And similarly, this also this will be equal to 2 pi i the value of the function at the point singular point z equal to minus 2 i. So, this total will become out to be 0. Okay. So, we can get this value. <laughs> Let us come to hmm. there is a uh, further results for this Cauchy integral that is the derivatives of the analytic functions. Now, we know if function f is continuous then it may or may not be differentiable, but if the function is continuous and differentiable then again we cannot talk about the second order derivative of the function of real because it totally depends what type of the functions you are choosing. But in case of the functions of complex variable if the function f is analytic then all of its derivative will exist and that can be uh, established with the help of our Cauchy integral formula. So, the proof we are not giving just uh, we are uh, giving the uh, formula for the derivatives of an analytic function. The, this result says if f z is analytic if f z is analytic in a domain in a domain d then it has it has derivatives of all orders all orders in d derivatives of all orders in d which are then also analytic also analytic in D, which are also then analytic in D. The values of these derivatives derivatives at a point z naught in D are given by the formula given by f prime z naught is 1 by 2 pi i integral along the path c f z over z minus z naught whole square dz and the nth degree nth derivative of f at the point z naught the formula is given by this factorial n over 2 pi i integral along the path c f z over z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 dz where n is 1 2 3 in general. Here c is a simple course here c is any simple any simple 
closed path in D, any simple closed path in D that encloses that encloses the point Z naught and whose full interior whose full interior full interior belongs to D belongs to D and we integrate the integration is taken counterclockwise the integration integration is done counterclockwise integral is taken counter. So, what this result says is that if a function is analytic in a domain D, then it is all of its derivative of higher orders, all orders will exist and they will also be analytic. And further, if we have the value of the function at a point Z not by the help of the Cauchy integral formula, then the corresponding values of the derivatives at the point Z not is given by this formula the first derivative of prime z naught is 1 upon 2 pi i integral c over c f z over z minus z naught whole square d z and the nth derivative at the point z naught is given by this formula factor n over 2 pi i integral of the function f z over z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 over the curve c where c is any simple closed path that integration is taken in the counter clock by direction and the curve must enclose the point z naught. Okay, lies in the domain where the function is analytic and calculated. So, basically this is the form, but uh, if we look this uh, our uh, Cauchy integral formula, then Cauchy integral formula uh, is nothing but the value of this, um, this is our Cauchy integral formula and integral f z over z minus z naught is equal to 2 pi i f z naught conditions are exactly same. So, if you want the first derivative, then it is easy to remember by just assuming that we are differentiating the whole thing with respect to z naught keeping a thus variable constant. So, if I differentiate with respect to z naught, the right hand side become 2 pi i f prime z naught and the left hand side f z is constant, z is constant. So, it is 1 of our z minus z naught whole square into f z. That is what exactly we are getting. Then if we further differentiate factor 2 sign come and 2 pi i f z over z minus z cube and like this. So, it is easy to remember the formula uh, if we know the Cauchy integral formula the thus. So, we will go the proof for, for one only and rest will follow in a similar pattern. So, I will not go. So, proof of first part one. So, what we have to prove is the derivative f prime z is nothing but this. Okay. <laughs> what is the derivative? The derivative of a function at a point z naught is nothing but the limit of this f z naught plus delta z minus f z naught over delta z when the delta z tends to 0. So, this limit. So, what we are doing is we are having this is a domain d, here is the point z naught and this is a circle c. Okay. Now, if I look uh, take a point another point z naught plus delta z which is very sufficiently close to this, then the function f will also be analytic at this point and inside it encloses the curve c. This is the curve c. It, it is included the curve c will also enclose the point z naught plus delta z. Okay. So, if we know the value of the function at a point z naught with the help of the Cauchy integral formula, then we can also find the value of the function at a point z naught plus delta z with the help of Cauchy integral formula. So, apply the Cauchy integral formula or using Cauchy integral formula to get integral formula to get the value of the function f z naught and value of the function at a point z naught plus delta z, we get f z naught plus delta z minus f z naught divided by delta z divided by delta z 
Now, this is nothing but 1 by 2 pi i delta z will remain as it is and then the value of this integral f z over over z minus the point z naught plus delta z d z along the path c minus the integral of the function f z over z minus z naught z minus z naught d z along the path c because f of z naught is 1 upon 2 pi i integral f z over z minus z naught d z. So, replace z naught by uh, z naught plus delta z d z we are getting this ok. Simplify it just when you simplify it you will get the value will come out to be uh, 1 by 2 pi i integral along the curve c f z over z minus z naught minus delta z into z minus z naught d z. Just you just simplify you will get that is now ok. So, that is that let it be 1 equation 2 this is 1 this is 2 ok. Now, what is what we want is we wanted to prove this part that value of this integral f prime z is this. It means when you take the limit delta z goes to 0, the limiting value of this that is the limiting value of this must coincide with this or in other words if I take this minus the difference of this then as delta goes to 0 it must go to 0. So, now consider the difference of these two. So, if you take the difference of this integrals because this integral uh, this is uh, uh, yeah this integral minus the difference of this integral is it not. So, consider this integral f z over z minus z naught z minus z naught minus delta z into z minus z naught d z along the curve c minus the integral of this f z over z minus z naught whole square d z. <coughs> As delta goes to 0, delta 0, this must go to 0, but what is this? This value is nothing but what? f z over this thing is it not and then minus this. So, we get this part equal to if I just take uh, because this integral uh, is the same along the same path. So, this integrand can be subtracted and we get the integral along the curve c which is comes out which comes out to be f z d z over z minus z naught minus delta z into into z uh, minus z naught d z. So, this is finally, here. so we wanted to show that this goes to 0 as n tends to infinity ok. So, our aim is to show required to show is that this part let it be uh, this part third tends to 0 as delta z goes to 0 ok. So, using the memory. Now, to show this thing since f z is analytic, f z is analytic. So, f z is also continuous, f z is continuous on c. Once it is continuous, then it is bounded, every continuous function is bounded. So, it is bounded. on c and once it is bounded in episode therefore, there exists a constant k such that mod f z is less than or equal to k for all z this is for all z belonging to c ok for all z belong to c ok. Now, let d be the smallest 
with the smallest distance d with the smallest distance from z naught to the point of c. That is this is our z naught here this is c, c is any closed curve. Okay. So, this is smallest distance is denoted by d, d is the smallest distance from this to this. Then for all z belongs to c, we get we have mod z minus z naught which is less than equal to z minus z naught minus delta z plus uh, this can be written as z delta z minus delta z. So, equality sign and which is less than equal to z minus z naught minus delta z and then plus mod delta z. Okay. But z is an arbitrary point and d is the smallest distance. So, this is greater than equal to d d is less than equal to this number always. Okay. So, from here we get d minus mod delta z is less than equal to z minus z naught minus delta z. Okay. Now, if I choose let us choose z delta z mod of delta z is less than equal to d by 2. That is possible because if z naught is here I can choose the point here at z naught plus delta z in such a way that is absolute value is less than d by 2. Okay? Because the any point z, any point z here, any point z, this is the point z. So, mod z minus z naught is less than d, is uh, greater than equal to d because d is the smallest. So, if I choose any point z naught plus delta z, this tends can be made less than d by 2. So, if with this we can say if it is there then minus d by 2 greater than this. So, this part is less than half d is less than equal to this portion d minus delta z because this is greater than equal to d minus d by 2 so get, and which is less than equal to z minus this and this. Okay. Therefore, from here what we get 1 over z minus z naught delta z is greater than uh, this is greater than this. So, 1 by this is less than equal to less than equal to 2 by d that is the import. Okay. Now, use this thing for this part because we wanted this third tends to 0. So, write down the third now use third. So, what is the mod of third portion? mod of third means mod of integral along c f z over z minus z naught delta z into z minus z naught d z. This is mod. Now, if you take mod apply the m l inequality. So, this will be less than equal to mod f z is bounded by k along the path c z minus z naught mod of this is less than equal to 1 upon this is less than equal to 2. So, 2 by d z minus z naught is nothing but z minus z naught this is just d a small circuit. So, it is greater than equal to d this is so 1 by this is less than equal to d. So, again d. So, it is again d. So, 2 by d d and then this is uh, Yes, this will be d. Uh, square will be there. I think that uh, there is a left. Uh, I am sorry, this part will be equal to square. So, here square is left. Mm. Uh, I think we have made a mistake. So, here it will be square. So, this is d square and d square. Okay. Now, this approaches to 0 as delta z approaches to 0. Why? Because when delta z approaches to 0, okay, what happens to this? Delta z approaches to 0, then 
this mod of delta z is also there yes this mod delta z this is mod delta z because dz is mod delta z is it no so this mod delta z will go to zero because rest are the constants so this will go to zero at mod delta z and delta z goes to zero therefore this integral will go to zero this this integral goes to zero it means this limit will go to this limit and once this limit goes to zero means this limit will be equal to this so this implies this implies that derivative f prime j naught is equal to um, limit z naught plus delta z minus f j naught by delta z delta z tends to 0 and which comes out to be same as 1 by 2 pi i integral f z over z minus z naught square d z is it not? So, that will be root. Okay. The Cauchy integral formula, uh, let us see a few examples and then we go for that. Suppose, <coughs> we have this integral, say integrate uh, the z to the power 4 minus 3 z square plus 6 divided by z plus i whole cube dz along the path c, where c is any closed contour contour enclosing the point z equal to minus i okay, counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. So, if we look this function, c is any closed contour. So, z is equal to minus i, this is minus y and c is this, which encloses the point minus i. So, obviously, the function z pole minus 3 z square plus 6 is analytic function, but because of the z plus i in the denominator, total function ceases to be analytic at minus i, is it not? So, this is equivalent to f z over z minus z naught whole cube. So, if you look the uh, formula for this, the formula for c says by Cauchy integral formula, the derivative f of z naught, the n th derivative of uh, uh, function at a point uh, z naught is nothing but uh, uh, factorial n over 2 pi i integral along the closed simple closed path c in d which encloses the point z naught of f z over z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 dz. So, if we compare this integral with this, f z is this here f of z is z pole minus 3 z square plus 6 and what is z naught? z naught is minus i and n becomes 2, n becomes 2. So, basically this is the same as the f 2 z naught, the second derivative of function at the point z naught means i. So, if you take this uh, curve, then the value of this equal to this is i, then the integral f z means z pole minus 3 z square plus 6 divided z minus i minus i power 2 plus 1 n plus 1 dz along the simple closed curve c which encloses the point minus i will be equal to 2 pi i times factorial 2 is it not and then second derivative of this. So, second derivative of this function z 4 minus 3 z square plus 6 and then value of this as z is equal to what minus i as z equal to minus i. 
So, second derivative of this becomes 4 12 z uh, square minus 6 at z equal to minus i and when you go for this the value will come out to be minus 18 pi i. So, that is the answer. So, this way <laughs> shows the value came out. Okay? Now, as a consequence of this Cauchy integral formula, we have few more concepts which are very useful. One is the Cauchy's inequality. Cauchy's, Cauchy's inequality. What this Cauchy inequality says is. the f uh, modulus of f n at a point j naught is less than or equal to factorial n into m divided by r to the power n, uh, where uh, uh, we choose c in a circle center where uh, let, uh, let f be analytic. in a domain D which enclose which contains a simple closed curve simple closed curve C that encloses the point that encloses the point Z naught inside it Z naught inside it okay circle C and let C is a circle suppose C is a circle uh, with center uh, uh, which contains uh, suppose here C is a circle circle of radius r of radius r and center z naught okay and center z naught then we have this result. The modulus of f and z naught is less than z. Uh, now, one more thing is uh, also also the function f z is bounded by on c within bounded on c. In fact, if say analytic, it will be bounded also. Okay. So let's see the proof is follows from the this now. What is our M A F N M N uh, F N Z naught. The N A derivative of F uh, at the point Z naught is equal to what? The formula says it is factorial N 2 pi i integral along the path C F Z Z minus Z naught N plus 1 dz. So, take the modulus, apply the M L inequality. M R inequality. So, this is less than equal to factorial n 2 pi. Okay. Then, now, mode of f z is dominated by m on c. So, it is less than equal to m. Then, z minus z naught, because it is a circle we are choosing with radius r. So, r to the power n plus 1. d z, mode of d z integral c with the circumference 2 pi r. So, we get this part and which is nothing but what? R R get cancelled, 2 pi 2 pi get cancelled. So, this is nothing but what factorial n by R to the power n into m. Okay? So, this goes <coughs> this one, that first um, is, is this one. Now, from here we also conclude another results which is known as the Rio Belli's theorem. Rivoli's theorem. What this theorem says is, if an entire function if an entire function f z is bounded in absolute value in absolute value for all z 
then then fz must be a constant function. So, we can say in short sort that bounded inter function is always a constant function. So, this result also gives you one uh, very important uh, 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 very important results that is if we take the sin z sin z when z becomes real it is a bounded function. So, sin x is bounded cosine x is bounded so far x is real, but when x is replaced by a complex that is a function is defined over a complex field then in that case the sin z becomes unbounded because if it is bounded according to this result it must be constant. So, it contradicts that because function is analytic everywhere throughout them. So, let us proof of this is very simple. Now, in the previous case in in previous result if I take n is equal to 1 then what happens there mod of f prime z naught is strictly less than what m over r, but function f is uh, entire function. So, f is analytic everywhere in the complex plane but f is f z is entire. So, it is analytic everywhere in the complex plane in the complex plane. Therefore, so, take r as large as possible infinity therefore, it implies that mod of f prime z naught tends to 0 as r tends that is f of z naught is constant, but z naught is arbitrary. So, we can say the f of z, but z naught is arbitrary we can replace z naught as so the function f is constant. Okay. And the converse part of this is the Morellas theorem. So, just I will give the uh, result which is the converse. If the function f z is continuous in a simply connected domain D and if integral of the function f z along any closed path C is 0 for every closed path c in d then function f z will be is analytic in d. This is the converse of the Cauchy theorem Cauchy integral theorem if the function is continuous in a simply connected domain d and if the line integral along any closed path is 0 then function must be analytic in d. Thank you very much that is all.